my girl April Mahoney actually uh, hooked me up with this cup. Okay. I won the, uh, on the edge with April Mahoney. I won the Edgy Award. And uh, oh. mm. hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another exciting episode of Meet the. And if you, uh, well, you see me, but you see this gorgeous woman in front of me, the, the dress and looking wonderful and but she has a voice. So I, I, what would I call this Mita? A lot of times we have Mita singer, but I'm gonna say Meet the Juju, <laughs> <laughs> which is one of her songs, which actually, if you, at the end of our in video or interview, however long it takes, cause this is real time, we're doing it live, a live interview, however long it takes, I'm going to do something different. We're gonna play the song Juju, because it's one of my favorites that she has. But you'll hear more about that later. So if this video goes long in the IGTV, check out the YouTube, the full version on the YouTube, and check out the song Juju. A lot coming. But without further ado, this wonderful sister in front of me, y'all make some noise wherever you are, even though we don't hear you. Miss Erica James. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Erica? I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. It's a little bit cold, but I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm a summer child, so <laughs> cold weather. I don't do well in the cold, but I'm I'm well. <laughs> well, where where you where you um let, let's get started. We'd like to jump right in during the meet the interview. So, where are you originally from? I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. Grew up in Bedside, Brooklyn. Eh, best I do with that. And I've been in Atlanta for 14 years. Atlanta. How do you like the ATL? Um, Dang, that was, did y'all see that? <sighs> let's get, because I want to get both perspectives. Um, okay. Professionally, Atlanta has been very good for me. Now, is that, is that, which side? Is that the, is that both music and career? Or is that the... I would say both. Okay. I would say both. Um, in terms of the music, it's still a work in progress, but I would say there's definitely a willingness to support indie artists here. Yeah. Um, Dating-wise, that has been a bit of a challenge. Uh, we, I, we have to do a whole nother, whole nother interview, okay? <laughs> don't worry, Anna. I'll be bringing my show down there soon. We get, That's a whole nother, believe me, and that is... That is a popular consensus I hear from women that live in Atlanta. 16 yep. years on my tour. Yeah, I hear that a lot. So, so yeah, but we're going to help everybody in a minute. We're going to get but, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> but <laughs> I want people to know, because um, you've been, how long you, have you been, mm -hmm. how long have you been singing? How long have you been a, well, how long have you been singing and how long have you been recording? And I'll tell you why I'm asking that question. Okay, so I have been singing since I was nine years old. Okay. And I began singing in my elementary school's glee club. I know, it's like so corny, but yes, that's where I started. Oh, no, no, that's, here's the thing about glee clubs. And, and I, I live in Burbank, California. So mm -hmm. Burbank High School was the school they, that, that was glee. Okay. That, where they recorded and that, that was, that, they got that from there. So the fundamentals that you learn on Glee Club are very good fundamentals. A lot of times, most of us, especially African-Americans, you know, we learn how to sing in the church, which yeah. it's cool, but you have four or five chords mm -hmm. and what you do to your voice is not always the best quality of what you, because you're going to strain your voice in the church. You're going to sing over, because oh, yeah. Mother Gertrude in the second row is singing loud and you say, hello, sing you know, it, everybody's yelling, you know, <laughs> no offense to my people. You, don't want to hear it. <laughs> and you, you know, you have church, like, hey, I'm just going to give me some chicken. That's all right. <laughs> but, exactly. so, so the Glee Club, which explains a lot because you have a very, uh, I love your voice. You have a sweet voice, a nice tone. And um, I'm hard on artists, but it, it's a refreshing sound as well as a marketable sound. So how long have you been recording? Um, I came back to music 
and 2016. So I've been recording a little over three and a half years. And that was kind of a fluke. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I fell out of love with music. Mm, fell out? I fell out of love with music. I did. Mm. Um, after a series of letdowns, which included uh, failed relationships, uh, my daughter was diagnosed with juvenile diabetes at two years old. Um, not having quite the relationship I wanted to have with my parents. Um, like music for me was all about love and I did not feel love. And so I opted to dismiss that part of myself. And I actually would get mad if people, you know, family members or friends would tell people like, oh yeah, she can sing. I would get so mad. I mean, I would be livid, like stop telling people I can sing. And so um, in 2016, I just decided I was gonna go to this party. And uh, there was this young man singing. And unbeknownst to me, he was friends with one of my cousins that grew up here in Georgia. And so we were all like acting up and taking pictures or whatever have you. And he posted the picture and she's like, what are you doing with my cousin? And he's like, oh, she was at this party. And, and you know, she's like, do you know my cousin could like sing? Like she could sing, sing. He's like, nah, not this girl. She ain't tell me she could sing. <laughs> she, ain't, she ain't said nothing about no singing, nowhere. <laughs> I ain't mentioned a thing, right? <laughs> so um, he hits me up on Facebook and he's like, I want to do a song with you. Your cousin said you could sing. And literally that was the catalyst for me getting back into music. Because other than that, I don't know that, I, I probably would have come back around to it. Um, but I don't know that I would have the same drive. Because- I love, I, I, I love, um, I, I, no, finish what you're about to say, because you said because- yeah. Just because at that that space that I was in, I definitely um, was pra I, you know practicing as a physical therapist and having a very successful career as a therapist um, and as a yoga instructor. But there was something missing. There was definitely a void. There was something that you know I felt empty or not completely fulfilled. And so when I started singing again, it was kind of like this space that had been empty was, was full of, full again. And I had decided, you know what, it doesn't matter what happens with this. You know, I'm not putting, I'm not putting a, a, a definitive, like I gotta do this to be successful. I just know that I cannot not do music again. It has to be a part of my life because that's the piece of me that perhaps has been missing and, and I've been, attempting to fill that void with things or people that were not good for my spirit. You know what I mean? Just not being able to put my finger on what was missing. But once it came back into my life, I definitely knew like, okay, this is what it is. And then wanting to share some of the experiences that I had gone through. And hopefully the music will resonate with people who are in need of healing. Because it's, it was it's funny. It's, it's funny because a lot of and i'm i'm very thankful that you took this course of saying that a lot of times you hear people saying that their music you know their music was the thing that saved them or their music or they, they talk about some song you know you hear a, a life gen is a jaheem or uh leela james or or anybody they talk about the things they're going through in your music you told said something that a lot of people probably identify with but don't say a lot of people like you said don't make it back from that a lot of people put their gift aside and go with what life kind of connects them to what life deems that they do at that moment mm -hmm. and you're saying what i'm getting from you is that your music came from a pure place but you didn't want it to feel burdensome. You wanted it to feel light. Like your music, like when I hear your music now, no matter what the story is, mm -hmm. even even the song you got about <clears throat> more than one dude. Um, <laughs> uh, all of the you, you see how she starts blushing and stuff. Y'all gotta, you, gotta connect. Y'all gotta follow Erica James. Make sure you follow. Her. <laughs> and like I said, this is gonna be a YouTube interview because we're gonna get a little deeper, uh, so it'll be a little longer. But don't forget, stay tuned, watch the whole interview, because at the end, we're going to play my favorite song that I've heard so far, Juju. I, right. You'll hear. But all of your music has a good feeling. And prime example, um, 
I love Anita Baker. Mm-hmm. Even when Anita Baker did, um, and I'm friends with the brother who wrote the song, Gordon Chambers, I apologize. Mm-hmm. I apologize. I still felt like, leave me you know, it's still like, I was wrong. You know, he's like, <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah. she wrong. Yeah. You know, yeah. But it, but it had a certain feel. Earth, Wind, and Fire. You know, reasons is a jacked up song. He was like, right. reason why? All the reasons were a lie. You know, all the illusions gone. The, the, we had a great night, but he, people saying that at their weddings. That's my wedding song. Like, listen to the lyrics. You got to. No, brother, take it again. <laughs> you know, Whitney Houston, saving all my love for you. You know, right. mess with a married man. But mm-hmm. but it felt it the feeling behind it wasn't uh well you've heard the artist they sing you're like man all of this feels you know nothing against Adele mm-hmm. or nothing against the, what, Sam Smith nothing against him <laughs> but sometimes it's like damn Sam your whole life is kind of <laughs> but it seems like right right it seems like I don't know sometimes uh, sometimes. You have to let the process do what it do and keep the gift pure. I don't know if that makes sense because it seems like you kept it in a in a good place, whereas mm-hmm. you went back to it with no no remorse versus being a bitter artist. You know, I mean, a bunch of people they can sing, they get up there and sing, and then afterwards they're like they talking about other people. I know people now who are, they have a beautiful voice, but the spirit behind what they put out right. is so. To, you know, and I don't see, I don't get that with you. I don't get that with your music. I don't get that with your vibe. And maybe it took you going through everything you went through to get to this next stage. Um, so um, people who are looking for your music, what are, uh, you have three main songs out right now that are, um, that are floating or? I've got a lot of songs out, but the, yeah, I've, I've put out quite a bit of music, but the songs that are out now, um, the most recent ones are um, Running, um, Fly Away, um, and, well, one of your favorites, Juju, is still popping. People right, still Juju, at Turk Stern, you got some other cheat. I, I just, it's a refreshing, and people will get it. People who get music will get what I'm saying when I keep saying refreshing. Because right. a lot of times of hearing the same old, same old, um it's good to hear a female with a voice that's kind of signature she may sound like this she may sound like this but the vibe of the voice sounds different and the signature right. is a good one. so it's 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 just refreshing to hear hear some good music and mr trickster that's another one that yeah mr trickster yeah <laughs> yes yes but there's no there's no bitterness there's no bitterness or bashing in the music y'all and, and the only kind of bad is smashing but no bashing so. right well, you know what? When I decided to, okay, so part of my healing was recognizing some of the experiences that I have just as being a part of the diaspora and that generational trauma. And I and I made a commitment that I would not make music that tears down Black people, period. It's not to say that I won't talk about some of the things that we face, because that's reality, but there's always going to be a positive spin to it. There's always going to be a lesson. There's always going to be you know, and whatever happens, it's going to be okay. Maintain your peace. And if you walk in righteousness, the universe is going to work everything out for you. And so I just try to remind, you know, us that we're beautiful people. You know, it's not that you're not going to make mistakes, but you've got to be better about holding yourself accountable. And when you hold yourself accountable and you do better, things will open up for you like, like this. No problem. So, I talk and, a little, and, I talk a little junk, but it's always with love. <laughs> that's good though. That's good. And professionally, now you hold, and this is, this is something I love. I'm, I'm getting to this. You'll see. Um, I've started hashtagging her time. We're in a, we're in a day and age where women, especially African American women, entrepreneurs, and educated, they're just coming to the forefront, and they're getting in. I, I, I'd love to say we're appreciating women more. But what I can say is that women are coming more to the forefront in key positions from Supreme Court judges to CEOs mm-hmm. to um, first mayors to, you know, congresswomen, yes. um, eventually president. You know, so there. How does this time feel 
as as a woman? How does this? Can you tell that there's a shift going on? You look like a young buck, but you you've been around for a little bit. I've been around. Thank you. I think my mom. <laughs> um, I think that the shift has been happening. What I what I can say that I've witnessed in the past five years is that women have been definitely more empowered and owning who we are, owning our sexuality, our intellect. Um, you know, for black women particularly, we've always been named as this, you know, angry black woman. And so just being able to assert ourselves and be respected and not seen as this threat on in the past five years, it feels like people are really seeing like, no, that's that's not the place that we exist. We're not threatening, we're just passionate women. And we've had to fight for so long. That that's our that's our default. We have to be passionate. We have to put that energy behind anything that we do because we've been discounted for so long. And so um, not for just for black women, but all women, this is a time where we're really owning who we are and not having to apologize for it. And so through my music, I am hoping that it's not you know, I'm not a feminist. But I definitely think that feminine energy is required just as masculine energy is required. Everything exists in duality. Um, right. But I think it's been, you know, a long time that the masculine energy has reigned. And it's just a little, no, it's, it's more, it's time for a little bit more balance. That's just right. how I see it. You know, and you, you, can't have good, and you, you have good quality. Your, your music feels like love music. It's been a while since I've heard a, some music that made me say, all right, now let me uh, make a phone call, turn this music up. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Like, well, what's wrong with me? <laughs> you know, it's supposed, to, but you made a good point. If you don't have both of the energies balancing and right. feeling like they want to connect, if you're just a guy up here and you're talking about very chauvinistic things, or you're a girl up here and you're talking about, yeah, you can get it if you do A B C D E F G versus right. saying I want it too. Come on up here and get some. Right. You know, so I, I like that about. All right. What what do you want to say before we get out of here? Because like I said, I could talk to you for hours. <laughs> uh, what do you want? What do you want people to know about Erica James and your music and your sound and what you're bringing forth now? Uh, what I want people to know is that my music is about healing. It's about creating a space where we can love again, where we can be vulnerable, and it's necessary in order for us to heal. And so why is that healing important? That healing is important because we want to leave a legacy for our children and we want to have something that's positive for our children. And so it's our responsibility to heal ourselves so that we can be better examples, so that we can empower our kids to be strong, to be well-rounded, to be loving, to be generous, to be kind, um, and, and to speak their truths. And so if we don't do this now, like we've got to stay on task. And that is what my music is about, reminding us that, that we are beautiful people, that we should love on each other a lot more than we do. Let's have fun together. Let's get back to the days where you, you know, like back out in the days where you play the music in the street and, you know, somebody was in the window and the kids was down on the stoop, you know, pop locking. Let's get back to that feel good music. That's right. what I'm here to do. And I want to share my experiences so that um, in my vulnerability, we can begin to heal and have honest conversation. That's right. Good stuff. Now, how can people get in touch with you? All right. Um, people can get in touch with me through my website, www.eljmusic.com. Or I am on IG, Facebook, and Twitter. And my handle is songs by EJ. That's S-O-N-G-S-B-Y-E-J. Erica James, thank you so much for being on Meet, but thank you for taking time out with me. I'm glad <laughs> to be here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We have to connect. We got to bring you on. We got to bring you on the love tour. We got to bring this thing together. I'm trying to get more people who are pushing that love movement. So I appreciate you. And for those that stuck around, stick around at the end of this interview right now. We're going to go into the song Juju. Listen up and connect with Erica James and songs by. EJ? Yes. On social media. Love you. Thanks so much. Thank you.